on the fourth floor, he decided that he would need creatures that could quickly form a powerful fighting force. Looking back at games, the one that stood out was a necromancer. He wanted a creature that could instantly summon hundreds of thousands of skeletons and other related mobs to bury those that stood in his way. Though he could easily wipe out anything, considering his broken ability, he liked the image of kingdoms and empires being overrun by the dead. Han was always fond of horror movies, so movies involving zombies were his top choices. Throughout the floor, he created tombstones, mausoleums, dead trees, and other sinister looking objects to create the feeling of death surrounding those who entered this level. When he and Helania were teleported to the exit, Han began to build his powerful necromancer. Picturing a slutty looking woman with pale skin and white hair, he outfitted her in leather and gave her a broadsword and whip. Giving her the name of Queen of Death, he went through and outlined her backstory. Like all of his creatures, Queen would be completely loyal and devoted to him. The only difference with her necromancer skills was how she wasn't weak to holy magic. She could in fact use holy magic, which was both weird and unexpected. Han pictured what enemies' faces would look like when holy magic didn't affect her at all. Laying his hand on the cheek, Han said, My beautiful queen, you are not only in charge of protecting this floor, but you are also in charge of my armies. Glancing to his side, he quickly created a hundred creatures that were formed from shadow and looked like ninjas. Turning towards Queen, he informed her, These creatures shall be your responsibility, and in addition to myself, will be controlled by you. They are created for the sole purpose of espionage roles. You will lead armies of the dead and swarm over all those who would stand in my way. Not moving away from his hand on the cheek, Queen looked dazed and she said, For you, I shall commit any act as long as it pleases my master. As Han and Helania walked up to the next floor, Queen held herself as she thought about the touch given to her by her master. Feeling empowered, Queen began summoning Death Knight, Skeleton Warriors, and Skeleton Mages. Though the floor looked easier than the one before it, the infinite number of death-related mobs would overwhelm any that entered the level. Reaching the next floor, Han thought it was necessary to have amenities on this level. He created on one side living quarters, hallways, and other items that made it look like an opulent hotel. On the other side, Han created a dining area that would put any Michelin star restaurant to shame. With the wave of his hand, Han created a hundred maids that would make sure his stronghold would look immaculate. Another wave of his hand created numerous chefs, sous chefs, waitresses, and other related food industry workers. With his ability, Han easily created a room that would generate all necessary food ingredients. The entire kitchen was filled with fantastic cooking equipment and tools to help the cooks prepare the meals. With each creature on this floor having their job-related skills and abilities, Han didn't need to concern himself with the maintenance of the stronghold and could focus on more interesting tasks. Though he created living beings from his thoughts, Han wondered whether this translates to real food. Sitting down at one of the tables, he motioned one of the waitresses to come over. Bring me a noodle dish with meat and vegetables in it, he told the waitress. Yes, my master, she answered curtsy. Waiting at the table, while his food was being prepared, Han wondered what his endgame would be in this world. Was there even an endgame? Could this experience be like one of those MMO RPGs that continued in perpetuity? The beautiful thing is that he could consider himself to be an administrator and play by his own rules instead of living to the tune of some major corporation. He thought back to all those light novels, manga, and anime that involved an OP character 
and how often they would have some kind of restrictions placed on them. With his hand, he casually create a beautiful rose that could be considered flawless. Would any of those people who created those various mediums have their main character be this compelling? Those people were probably too concerned about their consumers and not wanting it to be too boring. The rose in his hand symbolized the infinite possibilities in front of him. Halanya, I created this for you, to match your beauty. He raised the rose to let her take it from his hand. Her hand trembled as it brushed against his. My master, I do not deserve such praise. Helania's voice quivered with emotions as she took the rose. After the rose had left his hand, Han didn't acknowledge her anymore as he continued to think about his plans. Footsteps could be heard as the waitress and chef approached him, presenting his meal. The waitress placed the dish in front of him and stepped away waiting to hear his verdict on the meal. Materializing some chopsticks, he started to eat the Asian-looking cuisine. The dish reminded him of various regional dishes, a hint of Japanese, Korean, and Chinese. Everything seemed to be perfectly cooked and made him want to continue eating more. Within moments, Han was drinking the soup and emptying the bowl. It was delicious he said to the nervous-looking waitress and chef. We do not deserve your praise, both of them shouted out, bowing nearly 90 degrees. Waving his hand to acknowledge them, he got up and continued towards the stairs that led to the next floor. Considering how many floors he made the structure have, Han decided that this would be the last level. The nice thing about his ability was if he changed his mind, then he could just make modifications to the structure. He couldn't imagine intruders being able to go through the three floors he created. Though the structure looked decently sized from the outside, each of the floors were the size of a large city. It felt like something out of a certain Time Lord TV show, where the inside was bigger than the outside. There could be nearly an infinite number of floors and the outside would still look like a decently sized skyscraper. All his creations had the ability to teleport anywhere within the structure, so he didn't need to worry about some kind of transportation system inside. If he did create a transportation system, it would likely detract from the image he was trying to convey. Arriving on the last floor, Han imagined a long hallway similar to something in a royal palace. On either side of the hallway were statues of beautiful women, some of them in erotic poses. There were chandeliers repeated down the center of the ceiling, looking like they were created out of diamonds. The way they glittered took his breath away. As he continued down the hallway, he would make some minor changes based purely on his mood. When he decided that he had walked a decent amount of time, Han imagined a hellish looking French door opening made out of something similar to granite. Each door had an image of a beautiful woman, one of them looking like an angel and the other looking like a devil. Both of them looked like they were in pain, but their facial expression looked like they were experiencing pure ecstasy. Around the necks was a metal collar, with a chain running down from the collar to where the door handles were. The size of the doors was enormous, but slightly smaller than the hallway. He was hoping that it gave a sense of awe if someone were to arrive at this entrance. Behind the doors would be a grand throne room that would make any medieval throne room look like a linen closet. The doors opened as he walked towards them and let him see the splendor of it all. If a god were to have a throne room, then this is what it would look like. There was a short hallway that led to an opening. On either side of the hallway were fountains with magnificent statues. Listening to the sound of the water made everything feel relaxing. A red carpet led to a raised floor where an opulent throne sat on top. The throne was made out of a mixture of obsidian and marble that looked like something out of the Roman Empire. Arriving on the throne, Han sat on top of it and made it mold itself 
to make it comfortable for him to sit on. The feeling would be similar to a gelatinous seat that was formed enough, but let him lean on either side of the armrest. He could probably sit on this throne for days without feeling uncomfortable. In front of him, off to the side of the red carpet, Halania was kneeling with her head bowed. 